Welcome back to the introduction to particle systems. In this video, we are going to talk about affecting particle properties using matinee. Now, this will also, like in the last video, require the use of the particle parameter distribution, which we discussed in the distributions video. And what we're going to do is create a system by which we can use a trigger, and it will kill our fire effect. That's right. And then we can use the trigger again, and it'll turn it back on, and we can just continue doing that to our heart's content. So let's start off by opening up our particle system over here inside the generic browser. Let uh, Cascade open up. Now, again, this is going to require a particle parameter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the spawn rate. We'll just simply animate, uh, animate it going from its full value, whatever it is for each one of the emitters, down to zero, and then play it backwards going all the way back up to its full value. And through the power of mapping, we won't have to worry about a whole bunch of different values. Sounds good. So let's uh, start off with our flame emitter. Let's expand our required module. And if you take a look, our distribution is currently set to a value of 25. I'm going to change this distribution over to a float particle parameter. And we're going to set our max output to 25. And notice that the input is already set from 0 to 1. So we're expecting 0 to 1. We're going to map that from 0 to 25. And we'll set our constant, which is our default value, to 1, which is the equivalent of 25, turning our flames back on just like they were. Okay, as if we just received a 1 coming in. That's right. Now let's go ahead and take our parameter name, because it's vital that you name these. We'll call this flame state, which I know that kind of you know. Implies it implies. On, off, I was going to. I wanted to say employs, but that doesn't work. It implies that it's going to be a toggle, That's but it's right. not really a toggle. This is going to be a smooth animation. All right, now let's jump over to our smoke emitter, and we'll scroll down to our distribution again. Notice this is set to 15. We'll set this to a float particle parameter. Again, immediately I'll do a flame state name. Now same check that name. out. I'm using the exact same name. That's right. So that means over inside of matinee, I only have to animate one parameter, and it will in effect grab everybody. Right. And that is really why Zach is remapping these values here. So basically, in this case, he's receiving 0 to 1, and it gets mapped 0 to 15, where with Flame, 0 to 1 was remapped 0 to 25. That's a great way to have a whole lot of control with just one single parameter. That's right. All right, so let's go over to Sparks, and we'll do the same thing for a third time. Notice we're set to 15 once again. We will add a float particle parameter. We'll set the name to Flame State. Our max output will go from 0 to 15, and we'll set our constant back up to 1. Very nice. With that, we're done. So let's get out of our particle system, and we're ready to jump right into Kismet. Almost. You want to go ahead and hop over and... Uh, into, into the properties? Yeah, over and... Not just yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I, want to, I want to show I them the problem doing. when we get around to it. So if you guys are like, ooh, he said something in properties. Don't worry, I'll show you in a moment. <laughs> I'm going to take this big sequence we created in the previous video, and let's go ahead and uh, condense this down into a subsequence, which we will call Spark Effects. I don't know what I was trying to type there, but there we go. And it looks like I've already got a name like that in the world, so it says no. So let's call this Spark Sparkies. Spark effects, too. Or right, uh, Sparkies. There okay. we go. <laughs> Something even cooler, and we'll just keep these all nice and squared away, sorted together. All right, now I'm going to create a new matinee, but before I create it, I'm going to verify a couple things. I want to make sure my emitter is selected before I do anything involving matinee. Now let's double-click on our matinee system to open up the uh, matinee editor. And with our particle effects selected, I'm going to right-click and create a new empty group, which I will call Fire Effect. Now, just a quick note. You'll notice uh, under the uh, different groups I can create, there is a particle group. That, oh, I can just create one to show you what it looks like. Uh, there's already a group with this actor. Okay, I'll just tell you. It comes in with a toggle track, mm -hmm. which we're not going to be using. Right. We're in instead going to use a float particle parameter track. So the uh, the particle group isn't going to be of any particular use to us. So let's right click on this group and I will add as I mentioned a float particle parameter track and there we go. Now the key here and this is easy to forget so if you're following along and you get done and stuff isn't working remember that I told you to do this enter your parameter name for this track. So this will be flame state. Don't ever forget that or you will regret it. Now, I would like to maybe take our overall time and bring it way down. So this whole effect will take place over a second. Let's zoom back in. And what I'm going to do is create a key here at the beginning. 
and let's check its value. It should be set to one and oh, no, no, to zero. To zero. As a matter of fact, if you yeah hit cancel, cancel out, yeah, our particles died immediately. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and set its value. Right click, set to one. And they're back. And they come back. Let's go ahead and add a key at the very end. And this should, let's just double check the value. You want this to be zero. Okay, so now our particles should be gone, and they are. And as we scrub, there we go. So there's a little bit of juice, and then it goes all the way up. So if we uh, expand our loop section and play through, we're just turning off our fire effect over and over. Yeah, you just see how it's dying away. Yeah. And it, actually, if we don't loop that, it'll probably work better. So just hit play. <laughs> And the fire goes away. <laughs> Not a little laugh. And it gets, it gets that laugh. Actually, yeah. we, we won't be able to stop the bursts. Oh, that's we, a good yeah, point. Because they're, actually, they're doing their own thing right now. We'd have to completely disable that, but we're not going to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, that is a good point. So, uh, let's, in fact, it does look kind of cool because it looks like we have residual heat <laughs> that's uh, kicking stuff off in there. So, for now, let's go ahead and uh, close out of matinee. We're done in here. We'll jump back into Kismet. And we want to uh, set up some system by which we can control this. So we're going to create a new trigger here on the floor. I'll double click it first thing, and under its display properties, we will set B hidden to false so that I can see it in the game. As a quick side note, you know, in general, in your levels, you don't want a whole bunch of triggers floating around. We're just doing that for sake of example here because it's so easy. All right, now let's go back into Kismet. Notice this time I didn't click on the button. I actually did what I was supposed to. Uh, let's right click and create a new event from, in my case, trigger 5. This will be a used event. And we'll set our max trigger count to zero. Now, just as I did in the last video, we're going to create a switch that will jump us between play and reverse. Mm -hmm. So let's right-click, go to new action. We'll go down to a switch and just create a regular switch. We're going to set its number of links, or its link count, to two. And we'll go from our use trigger to the input. Link one will go to play. Link two will go to reverse. It really is that easy. But make sure that we set our switch to be looping so we can continue to go back and forth. That's right. All right. Now, with that, I think we're ready to give this a quick test. And this, uh, let's jump into the level. Give this a quick try. <laughs> and, <laughs> ooh, check it What's out. What's going on? Where did the particles go? We have no fire. Now, I have seen people try to tackle this problem by uh, creating a special section in Kismet. In fact, I even did it the very first time I ever set this up. But uh, you don't have to do that. The problem is that we need to grab this emitter and tell it more or less that we have a parameter. If we expand our emitter properties, you're going to look down and you'll see instance parameters. And if I expand this, you'll notice that flame state has already been added, but its scalar property is set to zero. That's that default property that we were setting earlier. We need to make sure that this particular emitter, this instance of our particle system, gets a default value of 1. Now, if I close this and go into uh, real-time mode, you'll notice our fire kick right in. And actually, you can use real-time as a way to test and make sure this is working. So let's right-click and play again in the level. And we have a fire pit, which is looking great. So let's hit our switch, and the fire goes out. Very nice. But there's still a problem. Our light is still on. Yeah. So that doesn't look right. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Now we need to add our light into the mix, and this is really easy. We're going to select our light. We'll go back into Kismet. We'll open up Matinee. I'm going to add a new group, an empty group, and we'll call this Fire Light. And to this, we're going to add a float property track, and it's going to give us the option to choose brightness. So, actually, you know what? We can't use brightness. Do you know why? Because we've already animated brightness. Very brightness is what's flickering. I don't want to try to animate two separate things at once. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding a uh, float property track, we're going to add a color property track. And we'll just animate the color going down toward black. Fancy. <laughs> now, if we click OK here, we need to add our first key. And before I do that, uh, we need to jump out of here because right now, you'll notice, actually, our, it's too late. Our light's already gone off. So check this out. Just a quick thing. Um, you can do this, and I should have done it before I even created this group, and now it's a little late. But you can grab your color from your uh, light properties. And I have my particle system selected. That's not what I wanted. There we go. There we go. Press F4 instead of trying to double-click. You can come in here. Notice that when I uh, added that track, it set this uh, the color down to black. That's not at all what I was looking for. So let's set this back to the color of orange. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah that'll work. Now, uh, inside your color picker, remember your custom colors, because this is a Windows uh, color picker. We can click Add to Custom Colors, and now we'll have access to this later. That's pretty handy and easy to forget. So we'll get out of our properties. You'll notice I forgot it. <laughs> All right, so let's create a key here. Uh, make sure we have the track selected. 
and we'll right click and set color. Oh, and it didn't show up in the custom colors. Oh, I was okay. so hoping it would because it's a Windows uh, color picker, but that's okay. We'll just set it to our pale shade of orange. Let's scroll out here to the end and make sure I can get all the way to the end. Press enter and add one more set color, and then this one we're just going to set down to black. So we're animating our color down to black. It's that easy. So now if we hit stop and play, shoom. Very nice. There you go. Now let's give this a quick playthrough, or actually we need to make sure that... Uh, no, that, was, that was good. We're set to kill. Let's just play it. I got confused there for a second. All right, let's uh, hit our trigger. Shoom. Very nice. And if we hit it again, boom, lights come back on and the fire comes back on. So a couple of things with the color picker aside, everything worked out really well. And that's actually going to wrap up everything for this video, and it's going to put an end to our particle series. So, you know, just in, in closing, be sure to get in here and play with these modules, take a look at some of the controls we've shown you, and experiment. You'll find that you have the power to create a lot of great effects really easily. Yeah, really, you guys have seen just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much power in Cascade. There are so many different modules that you can add so many different properties that you can manipulate and of course with all of this stuff being able to be controlled from over inside a kismet or matinee wow the possibilities are nearly endless they really are and that's going to wrap things up for this video thanks a lot